Bonjour, bonjour. Welcome to Meet Me in Paris, hosted by Brenda from Monarch's Market and co-hosted by Annie from Andy Annie Jones. Links to the hosts and the playlists will be in the description box. Okay, I have this wooden round box container. I found this at Goodwill last year, uh, $2.99, and then it was half off of that, so $1.50. It's all wood, and I thought this would be really cute. Painted over um, this image. This was hand painted. You know, this is this is beautiful. You know, my hat's off to whoever originally did this, but just not my style uh oh it's their initials 1996 this is from 1996 well we're going to give this a 2022 makeover and with a little french vintage vibe so it just reminds me of like a hat box so i was thinking that i have this rust oleum high gloss white and this is a paint and a primer and red is notorious to be difficult to cover up so I figure I'll give it a coat with this and then try to do some beautiful Parisian stripes I'm thinking maybe a lavender maybe a very soft pink I don't know we'll see So my spray paint is now dry. So what I want to do is add um, a light lavender. I love this lavender sachet, but I don't have enough in the container. So I want to try to mix some of this folk art light lavender and the folk art titanium white to get a lighter lavender. So then I added a bit of painter's tape. I found this at Dollar Tree as well. And I added three strips at a time and then removed the one in the middle so I would have a nice even stripe for my paint. So while my paint dries, I have a silicone mold with a couple of frames. I think this one right here will look really nice on the front. So I just have some air dry clay to just press into my mold. And I also used one of the embossing tools I found at Dollar Tree to get the rest of the clay off the sides. And once my paint was dry, I pulled off my painter's tape to reveal my stripes. And I was really happy with the way this turned out. So then I moved on to my next step. To apply my clay piece, I'm using a bit of Aileen's Tacky Glue and a little bit of hot glue for a quick hold just to keep this secure until the Aileen's sets up fully.
I love the idea of love notes and I love using stamps with love notes. So I went into Google and I just translated from English into French um, a couple of sentences that I thought just sounded really beautiful. I will love you um, forever for an eternity and I would cross the oceans for you and I dream of your face every night. And once I got them translated, I typed them into Google and I found a really pretty font and I printed them out and I just wanted to rip the paper that I printed them on just to make it look like it was a portion of a love note that had been ripped and saved and I stained it with a bit of coffee so it would really give it a nice aged effect and once it was all dry I wanted to glue it to the top with a bit of Mod Podge. And I also found some um, clay pieces that I had made from a previous project that I hadn't used. And I was trying to decide how I wanted to arrange them. And I decided to just use the roses and not the other piece to embellish the top portion of my hat box. So after I had the Mod Podge applied to the back, I used the Mod Podge roller to try to get the paper as smooth as possible so all of the little wrinkles and bubbles will be gone. And I found a piece of tissue paper that I had previously stamped and ripped off a few of those to add to the top, a crown, um, a fleur de lis and a little pocket watch and I thought those gave like a really you know Parisian accent and um, I ended up finding some rub-on transfers that I had in my stash and there was a cute little um, postcard and so I thought that would give a nice little embellishment as well and I ended up adding the postcard on top of the crown and um here I'm sealing the top of my love note and for my little roses, at first I gave it a little metallic brush with a bit of rose gold and real gold from folk art and I didn't like that so I ended up just adding a bit of the um, ballet slipper from um, Waverly. I thought that really gave a really nice accent to the roses. The pink on top of the purple it really did end up looking okay and initially that was what I was kind of like oh I don't know if I should put pink on top of the purple and so that's why I was choosing the metallic but I think the pink really did end up giving a really nice effect and then I used a bit of Kelly green for the stem and the leaves and once that was dry I added a bit of the metallic just as an accent to make the rose petals pop so once I was finished adding some of that metallic paint to the roses, I used some pearl wrap from Dollar Tree and I cut it into two strips so I could add some to the top and the sides to give it a bit more of a shabby chic look. And I used some of the cotton lace ribbon from Dollar Tree to make a little bow and I found some little key charms in my stash and I pulled out one that had um, like a small crown on the top of it and I used the wire that was attached to that to hold it onto the packaging and I just wrapped that around the bow so it would stay and added a bit of hot glue and I attached that to the top of the hat, ba the hat box like on the side so it would hang and then I put two white solo with flowers that resembled roses. I thought that would give just an additional shabby chic look to it as well.
So once my clay was dry on the front of my hat box, I used Cottage White from Folk Art to cover that. And once that paint dried, I had another stamp with a crown on it. And so I Mod Podge that in the center of the frame. And then I added a bit of Folk Art Gold to make the um, outer portion of the frame really pop against the uh, lavender and white. And just to make it look a bit more worn, I added a few strokes of antique wax with a chippy brush from Dollar Tree and then I sealed everything with satin Mod Podge and that was it for my Love Note hat box. I love the way this Love Note hat box turned out. Let me know what do you think of it. If you love beautiful farmhouse, shabby chic, and thrift flips on a budget, please check out our host Brenda from Moners Market and co-host Amy from Andy Andy Jones to get lots of beautiful inspiration. For this DIY, I have a canvas from Dollar Tree. It's the 11 by 14 inch. I have a bit of photo transfer Mod Podge and an image I found on Pinterest with, haha, Eiffel Tower from Paris, France. Chanel iconic fashion house from Paris. So I am printed this on PPD photo paper direct and I had to mirror this. So um, how this Photo transfer medium works as you cover your image and you um, lay it on whatever you're going to transfer it on and you leave it for 24 hours and it will transfer the image onto wood, fabric, um, canvases, pretty much anything that you can put um, a design on. So I'm going to get this up fully covered and it's supposed to have a good thick coat so I just want to make sure that I have all of my image covered so with the front thoroughly covered and the medium I flipped it onto the canvas and pressed it with my fingers and used the Mod Podge rollers to try to get it as flat as possible so that I could push the medium you know onto the canvas and it would be totally flat but uh, the next day I waited 28 hours when I peeled it up the edges were kind of um, like kind of loose where the medium was so I just end up um, snipping the excess off with scissors but my main image you know it did transfer fully it was just the corners that were kind of funky but I was happy that 
the Eiffel Tower, the pearls, the camellia flower, and the double C's, everything was still there. I coated my image in a satin Mod Podge to protect it and then initially I had wanted to use some crushed glass to go around the image to frame it on the canvas but I decided against that and I had some um, super fine iridescent glitter so I decided to use that so it would be a really nice sparkle all around the image. And once this coat of glitter dried with the Mod Podge, I added a sealing coat and this is the final result. I absolutely adore this. I plan to have this layered on a table standing up like this with some other pieces and I couldn't be happier with the result. Really pretty. Okay, to start this DIY out, I have a metal bucket from Dollar Tree. This is from last fall, Lavender Waverly Chalk Paint. I tried to get this black off with a bit of acetone, but it wasn't budging. So I'm gonna have to cover this with a bit of Waverly Chalk Paint in lavender. And I'm just covering this with a Pouncer. This is also from Dollar Tree. I don't want any brush strokes on the metal, so the pouncer is the next best method to using spray paint. Chalk paint has given some really good coverage. Just going back over, making sure I have all of the little edges. Once my chalk paint dried, I used my printer and I found some images uh, of some Chanel logos on Pinterest. So I just printed them on tissue paper uh, from Dollar Tree. And um, for this, the first side, I didn't think about it till after I had it Mod Podge down. I had started ripping the edges and I ripped it a little bit too small. So this first side is um, a little smaller than the opposite side. But once I got to the back side, that one, um, I left that um, piece bigger so I could have a nice square. And uh, when I do my pearl trim around it, it looks more like um, a square logo, like a, a label, than this side. Once my initial coat dried, I did a sealing coat over the top of the tissue label. And when that dried, I added some of the same pearl trim from the first DIY just to give more of a Chanel effect. Chanel is known for their pearls. And I think the trim was a really nice addition. So when you're using tissue paper on color, like a colorful background, it's not going to be 100% invisible. It's more... Um, it's less noticeable when you have it on a white background. So I did have a smaller bucket and some smaller labels. So I'm showing you here how it looks when you add the tissue paper to a white background. And this is just to give you inspiration of different ways that you can, you know, print logos out and use tissue paper, you know, to decoupage. This is not going to be sold. This is just for my own personal use and 
So here's a close up of this bucket and the smaller bucket and I think they really turned out cute. And here's a look back at my other Parisian inspired DIYs from today. I enjoyed making these for you guys today. I'll have the link for the playlist in the description box. Please enjoy the playlist. Thanks so much for watching. Au revoir, my friends. God bless you.